Good evening. I wanted to go over the Part 3 Civic Literacy Document-Based Essay for the U.S. Regents. This essay is a DBQ, so it will test your understanding and ability to use a series of documents to write a thorough analytical essay. So the task for this will always be the same, and you will see that there are three tasks identified. So you have to read and analyze the documents. The questions that go along with those documents are to help you break down the meaning of that document, and the questions will help you connect that document to one of the three tasks, which I'll explain momentarily. Some of those documents might pertain to more than one task, but the question just really focuses on one aspect. You can use it for both, however. Once you're done answering all those questions, you can use that information from the documents and your knowledge of social studies to write an essay. Your essay must describe the historical circumstances surrounded the constitutional or civic issue, efforts excuse me, explain the efforts by individuals, groups, and or governments to address this constitutional or civic issue, and then discuss the extent to which these efforts were successful. So in this video, I'm going to give you an overview of the essay, and then I'll create additional videos in which I'll go much further into each of these parts. Now, this essay does not set a particular requirement for the number of body paragraphs the real important thing is, is that you are completing each part of the task completely. So describe means to illustrate something in words or tell about it. So you have to give us some details like who, what, when, where. Then explain means to make plain or understandable. So this is where you talk about like the how and why. You know, where the reasons or causes of something, how does something develop, how are they connected, and then discuss means to make observations using facts, reason, and argument. So it's asking you to evaluate and think about, like, were the actions taken successful in achieving their goals? And we'll get more to that in a moment. So one of the things I want to talk to you about is, let me go back to this, is the rubric. So if you know what the rubric asks you to do, you are more likely to get the top scores. So you have to thoroughly develop all aspects of the task. So you have three parts of the task. If you don't do those evenly or in detail by describing the historical circumstances around the issue, explaining at least two efforts, because efforts is plural, so that's two or more, to address the issue by individuals, groups, and or governments, and discuss the extent to which these efforts were successful. If you don't do that evenly and thoroughly, you're not going to get a five out of five on the rubric. You have to be more analytical than descriptive. So if you're just kind of telling me a story about what took place, you're probably being more descriptive and more of a narrative. You have to explain like how and why things are happening to be analytical. And then you have to incorporate relevant information from at least four of the documents. Now, I always say that you should use every document you can to help you complete the task thoroughly. Um, that's going to help you really deepen probably your analysis if you're using those documents and making those connections. Every document given pertains to the task in some way. You also have to incorporate substantial, relevant outside information. Students are always like, well, what does substantial mean? My rule of thumb is three is the magic number. So you want to try to have like three good, solid pieces of outside information per body paragraph. If you can't do that, you do the best you can. But you want at least one piece of outside information per body paragraph just to make sure that you're rounding this out. Richly supports the theme with many relevant facts, examples, and details. Again, three is the magic number. You want to make sure that you are developing. Those facts, examples, and details could be outside information. It could be information from the documents. I do not recommend that you quote directly from the documents. I recommend you paraphrase, but you really want to make sure that you're proving the points that you're putting forward. And then you have to demonstrate a logical, clear plan of organization. So you need to have intro. Um, you need to have a conclusion, and they have to be beyond a restatement of the theme. So I'll show you um, when I when we go through this, 
but you'll always get some historical context with a theme on the essay booklet. If you just copy that, you can still use that to write a really well written paragraph or I'm sorry, essay, but you're not going to get a five if you're just copying what they gave you. You really have to put it into your own words. But think logically. As a historian, you want to think chronological. You know, you want to make sure that you're doing the task in order, right? So don't talk about the 1900s before you talk about the 1800s. Don't talk about successes before you explain what the issue was and what people or the government did to address it. So really think logically about that. And some of the things I show you is going to help you be more logical with that planning. Um, I kind of explain like students who took AP World or the, like Global 10 with the Enduring Issues essay or the continuities and changes over time. Like that's essentially what you're doing here. You're talking about the issue. You're talking about over time what people did, what the government did to try to address that issue. And then does this issue still exist, right? Try to make those connections to the 21st century. Look at what's going on around us. Pretty much every single issue we have studied in U.S. history still exists to some degree within the United States or some part of the world that you can make a connection to to kind of show that change over time and then discuss to what extent it was successful. And I'll go more into that. So while you approach the documents, you always want to keep the essay that you're going to write in the back of your head. A lot of students will just pretend to ignore the essay at the end and just focus on the documents, but you're going to end up doing more work. And I'm a big believer in work smart, not hard. So you can earn six points on these documents. It's reading comprehension. You're going to find the answer someplace in the document. So look in the document for the answer read the question first. So whenever I look at a document, this is my protocol. I'm looking at the question. What do I have to find? I'm going to look at the sources and I'm going to look at the date. And that's going to help me contextualize. I'm going to brainstorm outside information. So one of the biggest issues that I've seen students do either in AP World, Global 10, US, doesn't matter, is once they start working with the documents, it's like tunnel vision and they can't think anything outside those documents. So if you think about outside information before you even start reading the document, what you know about the topic, what you maybe know about the source, that's going to help prevent that. You also want to read and annotate the question for the answer. A lot of students don't like to annotate, but then when you're writing the essay, it's like double the work because you have to go back now and skim the document. So do those annotations. Record your answer once you find it and stop reading if you can. And what I mean by if you can is if you're familiar with this topic, if you're familiar with the document, or if you're pretty confident in your answer, like save your energy. This is a three hour exam, more if you get extended time. It's a lot of reading and writing. So if you're familiar with the document or the content and you're pretty confident your answer is correct, don't keep reading unless you really feel like you need to. Um, and make sure you think about how you would use this document in your essay before you move on to the next one. So what I mean by that is think about the three tasks that you have to complete in your essay. What's the issue? What was done to address it? And to what extent was it successful? How would you use that document for the essay? Which part of that task would that be that you would approach it? And make sure you write that down because that's going to help you when you come back. And I'll show you what I mean. So at the top of this document, I have one slash two. Identify the task for which you'll use the document for. So this particular document um, would help me describe historical circumstances. So that would help me describe the issue. And even though um, the question really focuses on the issue, by looking at the document, in this case, it's a declaration of sentiments. I know that this also ties into the efforts by individuals and groups. I've already made some connections to outside information before I even started reading the document. And I know that there's a bunch of women who helped organize the conference at Seneca Falls. They helped draft the declaration of sentiments. And they were doing this to raise awareness of these issues around women's rights. Keep in mind that the answers to your documents don't have to be complete sentences, but they do have to be a complete answer. The biggest reason why people will not get these points is because they're being too vague. 
if you just wrote the right to vote instead of women's right to vote as an answer to this question, which is one of the concerns of the writers of the Declaration of Sentiments, you probably would lose the point for being vague. So don't be vague. I really truly believe that if you take the time to read the question, brainstorm outside information, read the document for the answer, annotate, and think about how you're going to use that document when you go to write that essay, you're going to do a lot better when it comes time to actually write because you've already thought about it in the long term. Now, there are two ways that you can structure this essay the way that I think about this topic. And I'll get more into those in separate videos. But the one way you can do this is in what I call the issue-based essay organization. So the issue-based outline or organization has students focus on each body paragraph on one aspect of the issue. So in these paragraphs, all aspects of the essay task are addressed. So this allows often for more content analysis, a deeper discussion of the nuances of the issue and making a lot of those connections over time. So this might be for more advanced writers. So each body paragraph would pick one aspect of the issue. So for example, if you're doing women's rights, maybe you would do a body paragraph about voting, one about workplace discrimination, and another about equal rights in general, or maybe even access to education. And within that paragraph, you would talk about the historical context. You would describe where it took place, when it's an issue, how it originated. You would identify how it developed over time, who's involved. You would go into the actions taken by the individuals in the groups and the government to address the issue. You would explain why it's an issue and why it's been debated over time. And then you would like discuss to what extent it was successful. You're going to include evidence from the documents and outside information with that as well. The other way you might organize this essay is what I call the task-based essay organization. So this has a student write about each part of the task as a separate body paragraph. While this allows for analysis, it's a little bit more straightforward. The, I recommend this format for writers who might struggle or are concerned they might overlook an aspect of the task and they want to make sure that they get all parts of the task completed. So each body paragraph is one aspect of the task. So you'll have a body paragraph explaining the historical circumstances of an issue and you would include outside information and the documents. The second body paragraph would go into how individuals, groups, and or the government try to address the issue. Again, bringing in outside information and those documents. And then the third body paragraph would explain how successful those efforts of the individuals, groups, and or governments were in addressing the issue. That's that to what extent it's successful. And when we're talking about to what extent, you have to really think about like, was there a lot of change? So it was very successful and it really impacted a lot of people or it had long-term impact, or maybe it was somewhat successful, like it had some impact for some people or the impacts short-lived, or maybe there are some changes, but it still exists. And then unsuccessful means that it had no impact whatsoever for anyone. Now, I always say that only a Sith Lord deals in absolutes. So I would never say that it was either all successful or not successful at all. I would play it safe someplace in the middle where some might argue this, others might argue this, and give the evidence to support that. Check out my other videos for more details about how you might structure your essay.